Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Praise be to God. Glory, glory, and glory. You know, one of the things that the Word tells us, and it's just amazing what's going on right now globally. The Lord says, if you'll seek me with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, you'll find me. Three things. See, if you're not a person that's willing to seek him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and all of your strength, you won't find him. He'll be distanced from you. And why does he want us to do that? Because there's something that happens. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. That means breath. See, when you really seek him with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your strength, you change. And you become more in his heavenly image. Does everybody understand that? There's an exchange being made. Why? Because spirit is breath. When you're not going after him with all of your strength, all of your mind, and all of your heart, you are missing. You're not getting the fullness. See, he's a triune God, and we are a triune being. So there's got to be three areas that seek him. When you seek him, you'll find him. When you find him, you become like him. Does everybody understand this? That's why it's so important to deny yourself and worship. Don't go by how you feel. Don't let any headache or toe ache or whatever it is bother you. I'm telling you, if you'll press through, you'll get freed. The problem is the enemy pre prevents individuals from crossing over and pressing through. Because the eyes are on you and not him. You cannot go after him if your eyes are on you. That's why he says, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself in anything. We must die that he can live. Amen. Is everybody okay? So we're talking about the heavenly image. Now there's his image, but then there's a heavenly image. And that image is the one that the demons fear. Even when in the book of Acts, now let's go there for a second. I think it's Acts 19. Acts 19. Hallelujah. In verse 13. Acts 19, verse 13. Is everybody there? What does it say? Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Well, obviously, you saw that there's no relationship between them and Jesus. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? In other words, Paul carried the heavenly image of Christ. The demons knew who Paul was. They knew. He took authority. They knew exactly. When they saw Paul, they saw Jesus. Does everybody understand that? Then the man whom, in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house butt naked and wounded. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now that's what God is trying to bring to me and you. The demon should fear you. It doesn't mean they're not going to attack you. But they should fear you. And when you're attacked, you should not fear them. 
Does everybody get that? You should take authority. Don't run. And don't put your covers over your head. Don't hide underneath the pillow or get underneath the bed. Take authority. Even my daughter who was around, I don't know, six, seven, eight, something like that. One night she came running in my room, jumped in our bed. So what's up? She said, I could feel, I sense, I knew it. A spirit came in my room and it was frightening me. I said, what did you do? She said, I rebuked it and commanded to leave. And then I got up and ran to your bed. <laughs> but it left. It's childlike faith. That's all it is. Childlike faith, man. Take authority. Don't wimpy out. <laughs> First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Heavenly image. So does sin prevent the individual from carrying the heavenly image? Yes. How about disobedience? How about rebellion? How about touching unclean things? You got to understand that the enemy is doing everything he can to prevent the heavenly image from being manifested through you and in you. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Let's speak, speak it together. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last day. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if it need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the what? Genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be, found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen the, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, <clears throat> receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. See, the enemy wants to sift us. <laughs> he wants to try us like gold. You and I are right now, and especially in a time globally, everybody's going through a trial. Everybody's going through the test. Amen? There is a time when God places you where you got no other choice but stand on his word. No matter what's going on around you, no matter how you feel, no matter what sickness you have, no matter what's happening, you have no choice but to stand on his word. He's checking out whether you're willing to accept the heavenly image or not. He wants to know that genuine faith of yours, that connection with him. He wants to know whether you're going to wait to be led by the Spirit of God or you're going to move on, your, on yourself. Remember, Jesus came in the heavenly image of God. It says that the glory of God was on the face of Jesus. He was led by the Spirit. He waited. He didn't do anything according to his own will. In fact, that's, he kept saying it all the time. I'm not doing my will. I've come to do the will of my Father. See, when you are born again and truly in the Spirit, you are here to do the will of the Father, not yours anymore. You maintain the heavenly image in that degree. So you don't want to do anything else but do his will. It doesn't mean you can't have fun. It doesn't mean that you can't become prosperous. It has nothing to do with it. Everything must be according to divine order in his will. So that nothing contaminates that heavenly image. Nothing. Amen? Luke 22. <clears throat> Luke 
Luke 22. Hallelujah. In verse 28. Luke 22, 28. Jesus said, but you are those who have continued with me in my trials. And I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me. That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may what? Sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen the brethren. What a powerful thing. He says, man, you're going to go get, let me tell you. I'm praying. He didn't say he was going to stop Satan from sifting him. He just said he was going to pray for him, that his faith maintained. So he was going through the sift. He was getting sifted. He was getting tried. But there was something powerful because he says, listen, I'm going to pray that your faith is maintained. And when you get done, go strengthen others by what you went through. Why? Because he is able to now give more to others because that sifting brought him more into the image of the heavenly Christ. Does everybody get that? Sifted as wheat, <laughs> but my prayers are going to help you. They're going to help your faith. And when you get strengthened, return and strengthen others. In 1 Peter 4. Let's speak it. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to what? Try you, test you, challenge you, <laughs> and conform you into the image and likeness of Christ. As though some strange thing happened to you. You know, it shouldn't be a strange thing. You should be accustomed to it. Does everybody understand? I mean, we should all be accustomed to it. Welcome to the earth. You don't, go on, you don't need to go on Facebook and tell everybody what you're going through. On Fleshbook. Amen? Man, bring it to the throne and not to the phone. But what? Rejoice to the extent that you what? Partake of who? Christ's sufferings. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached in the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. How many of y'all want the spirit of glory and God to rest upon you? Well, come on. We love to suffer. On their part, he's blasphemy. And on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, or an evildoer. In other words, no suffering according to the fleshly works. Or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for what? Judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as a what? Faithful creator. That's the fiery trial, to partake of Christ's sufferings. Developing your integrity in his heavenly image. 2 Corinthians 4. You're a good candidate, man. We get calls all the time, man, I've lost everything. I've lost my family. I've lost this. I've lost that. I don't have a job. I'm homeless. I'm, praise God, you're a good candidate. For what? To be conformed into the image of Christ. Because you've got to come to the end before a new beginning. And one of the things that the enemy likes to do is when you finally come to that end and that new beginning starts and that heavenly image begins to come upon you and, and manifest through 
then he's trying to, what the enemy does is come to try and push you ahead of that development. And then you go into the flesh and it nullifies growth. Anything of the flesh will nullify growth. Anything. Anything of the flesh nullifies growth. Everyone say it with me. Everything of the flesh nullifies growth. So when you get in the flesh, you nullify growth. There is no growing in the flesh. None. 2 Corinthians 4. Verse 16. You know, there was that old saying that cigarettes used to stunt growth. Yeah. You remember that? They'll stunt your growth. They didn't tell you it'd kill you. it just stunt your growth. They didn't tell you it'd cause cancer. Must have been an experiment, one of those experimental things, you know. Well, flesh is the same way. It's toxic. It stunts your growth. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4, verse 16, let's speak it. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day into him's image. For our light affliction, yes, which is but a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory. Well, we don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are temporary, but are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. So we're being new, renewed day by day, day after day after day into the heavenly image to discern and see heavenly things. To see your heavenly calling, purpose, and destiny. It's an inward image that's changing to express the outward. James chapter 1. Now you will not find that heavenly image in the mirror. Hello. <laughs> so don't look for it in the mirror. It is expressed through you for others to see, not you. <laughs> James 1. Is everybody there? Glory. James chapter 1, verse 2. What does it say? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, not if you do, when you do. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, which means endurance. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Listen, lacking nothing. In the area of you are carrying the heavenly image, you lack nothing. It's when you don't, you lack many things. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, no doubting, no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Here we are talking about something that's powerful. He says, look it. You're going to go through these trials. You're going to go through these tribulations. I want you to count it as joy. Because there's going to be a, a com completion and a perfection in you that is going to change things. You are not going to lack anything if you allow this to happen. The enemy will try you in every area. What God is doing here now is he's trying to establish a warrior mindset in a heavenly image. He's trying to establish what? A warrior mindset in a heavenly image. Tell me what demon can come against that. 1 Corinthians 15. Everyone say it with me. A warrior mindset. A 
Oh, snap. Oh, they're going to be shaken. Remember, what's the first thing the enemy likes to steal? Your identity. Likes to compromise it, steal it. 1 Corinthians 14, 20, uh, 42. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 15, 42. Everybody got it? Snap. <laughs> Verse 42, let's speak it. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is, soon, is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And that is, as it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. And the last man, last Adam, became a life-giving spirit. Now think about this. God gave his spirit to change me and you. His spirit is breath. God is spirit. He's breath. Jesus came to change our DNA. To change everything. His DNA, our DNA is changing more and more into his image, in heavenly image. We're being changed. But the powers of darkness are altering humanity's DNA. Through certain things. Through medications. Through music. Many other things that people don't even know that their DNA is changing. Their markers. Oh, everybody that's been poached... <laughs> it's got a DNA marker not from God but from the enemy hallelujah as it is written verse, uh, verse 47 let's speak it the first man was the of the earth made of dust the second man is the Lord from heaven as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as the heavenly man, so also are those who are what? Heavenly. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now, you don't have to wait to go home to get the heavenly image. The heavenly body will come. But the image is this likeness and character that is expressed through me and you. Especially through your words. So we here now we have a heavenly image waiting for the <laughs> heavenly body to come to complete everything. Amen. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. So the enemy is doing everything he can to get DNA markers of the beast. In the people. It changes their DNA. Verse 1. Therefore be imitators of what? God is dear children. Be imitators of God. Now that's a pretty powerful statement. Imitators. Be like him. Carry his heavenly image. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetousness man, 
who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the what? The days are evil. They are wicked. We are being bombarded in every area. Every area. We're to be imitators of God as dear children, and that means his likeness and his image. Jeremiah 18. Everybody okay? Heavenly image. Jeremiah 18, verse 1. Let's speak it. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I'll cause you to hear my words, cause you to hear my words. And I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into a, another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look at the clay, it is in a potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and destroy it. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I have thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning good with which I said I would benefit it. Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now, everyone, from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. God has fashioned a plan to turn the earthly image into a heavenly image with a warrior mindset. That's why you and I are going through everything. See, you and I are going to go through it. Many people won't go through it. They'll get stuck in it. The world is stuck in it. They've been taking tr control over all the circumstances that's going on. We haven't been. We're under a higher authority. Amen. We are offspring. Everyone say, I'm an offspring of God Almighty. Think about that. You are born in an image and, and being re, going through regeneration in this image and likeness to bear the heavenly image. This is awesome. Like I said, don't let the mirror tell you who you are. And don't let your emotions tell you who you are. And don't let any human tell you who you are. Let the Spirit tell you who you are. And let the anointing tell you who you are. Amen? Don't let your thoughts tell you who you are. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verse 17. See, when the enemy attacks he only can bring you to your past he attacks you from your past because he has no future F 
Philippians 3, verse 17. Let's speak it. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who, are, who walk as you have us for a pattern. That's another following. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will what? Transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to the his glorious body. That's what we're finally waiting on. According to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. The final fulfillment of getting a glorified body. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Ephesians 4, 17. Let's speak it. This I say, therefore, in testifying, O Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind and their thoughts, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So, and put on the what? New man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, don't sin, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, and don't, what, give place to the devil. Why? Because he's going to stunt your transformation, your conformity into the image and likeness of Christ. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. These are all things that will contaminate. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as, as God in Christ forgave you. You know, unforgiveness, bitterness, those are things of offense. All of these things are what cause contamination and stunt growth. They actually begin to steal the heavenly image and promote the earthly image. Amen. Amen. And Luke 14. Luke 14, verse 17. Somewhere around here. 16. Oh, I'm sorry. Luke 14, 25. Luke 14, 25. Is everybody there? Now great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple or he cannot carry my image. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Remember, a disciple is a reflection of Christ. Amen? For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? 
Thus, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see him begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able to, with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great off, great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple or become in my heavenly image. Salt is good, but if it salt has lost its flavor, how is it to be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Romans 12. Verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. And do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? renewing, refreshing of your thoughts, your minds, till it becomes a warrior mindset, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 8. Romans 8.28. Everybody there? Let's speak it. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is God who Christ who died and furthermore is also raised, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Everyone say, I'm more than a conqueror. In the heavenly, Im in the heavenly image. That's your new identity, heavenly image. Amen? Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, where? In heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which we, he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through the, his blood, 
the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and that which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained a what? An inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 5. And we'll close here. Verse 16. <clears throat> Heavenly image. Let's speak it. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things that have passed away, all, behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We are ambassadors. That means we must be carrying the heavenly image of Christ. Amen. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Don't touch and agree with certain things. Be careful. There's a lot of contamination going out. And people are just touching and agreeing with it, not realizing that they're losing the heavenly image and becoming more and more carnal. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual process of drift away. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Let God build the house. Or you labor in vain. Laboring in vain is flesh. It's carnal. Amen? And it's contaminating. The Bible tells us that we should not be defiled. Amen? Don't be toxic. Only toxic to the enemy by carrying his heavenly image. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Lord, that the fear of the Lord would rest upon us all as we carry the heavenly image of Christ Jesus and that the fear of your presence to every demonic force and every antichrist spirit will come upon and express itself so that your name would be glorified because every knee will bow to your name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.